Hello, everyone. Hello. It's good to welcome you to Wednesday Night Bible Study. Here we are, just two guys that love the Lord, and we are going to pick up again in Mark's Gospel. We're at the end of chapter 6, going into chapter 7 today. Uh, I'm going to pray, and then we'll get started here. All right? Let's go. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for all the good things that you provide for us. You watch over us and you help us each and every day. And we're so thankful for that. And tonight, we just want you to honor us with your presence, touch our hearts, touch our minds. And may this just be a great time of refreshing ourselves in your word. For we ask it all in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Okay, Pastor David. Uh, I got up here, Jesus walks on water, and he has just passed by the disciples, but I'm going to go down here to verse 53, because it says, after they had crossed the lake. Now, that's after Jesus has climbed into the boat that they get to, uh, again, I can hardly say that word. You pronounce that word. Gennesaret. There you go. That's where yeah. they're going. So they brought the boat to the shore, and they climbed out, and the people recognized Jesus at once. Gets no peace. No, he's, they're, always, <laughs> they're always looking for him, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, they sure are. And then they run throughout the whole area. Now, let me make sure. They're back on the side of the lake where I'm, I'm getting confused about uh, Gen G G G No, the Gennesaret is near uh, uh, Capernaum. Okay, All right, so they're Just, on the northwest right, side. Right. They're back on the Jewish side. Side. Right. Okay. That's what if I they mean. were headed for Capernaum, they they veered south and they've hit the hit the coast in the wrong place. I got you. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, people are beginning to respond once again. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are coming. They're carrying sick people on mats uh, to wherever they heard that he was. They want to be close to Jesus. And it says wherever he went in villages, cities, in the countryside, they brought the sick. Out of the marketplaces, they begged him to let the sick touch at least the fringe of his robe, and all who touched him were healed. So that's how chapter 6 ends. Now, there's, there's an interesting sidelight here on Mark, in Mark. Mm -hmm. He consists, instead of, it's translated healed, and in some translations it's translated cured, but the actual word he used is saved. Oh, Okay. So he ties wow. it to the larger, to the larger mission of salvation that way. Uh huh. So oh, okay, well, that's interesting. Well, as we make the transition to chapter seven, uh, it's interesting to me that you have got a lot of sick people around Jesus yeah. at this point, and uh, with all those people around him, there's a lot of impurity because that's why they're sick. Yeah. But Jesus heals them, and it says here that they're healed or they're put back together and they're whole because it, it seems like it's an interesting uh, transition to chapter 7 because now we're going to talk about purity. Purity, yeah. Even as he is... Clean and unclean. Yeah, even yeah. as he is uh, surrounded by a lot of impurity. Yeah. So, okay. Here we go then. Chapter 7. It says, one day, some Pharisees and teachers of religious law arrived from Jerusalem to see Jesus. Now, these scribes. two groups. Pharisees and scribes. Pharisees are uh, laymen. They're leaders of, the, mm -hmm. leaders of the congregations. They're leaders of the, uh, of the temple. Uh, they would be the church board of the, of the temple, if you will. Okay. Scribes are theologians. Yeah, our church board's a good church Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Scribes are the teachers of the religious law are, uh, are just that. They're the theologians. They teach the law. They interpret the law. They decide what's right and wrong. They right. decide uh, how to uh, apply the law. And the Pharisees are the ones that, that, quote, apply the law with their lives and, and show people how to live their lives, if right. you will. So. Okay. That's an interesting uh, word there, to see Jesus. Uh, they're going to see Jesus, but then again, they're not going to. They're see not going to see Jesus. They're yeah. going to. They're going to see who they want to see. Yeah, I, I, I'm afraid we might do that sometimes. Yeah, we've got to be careful that we see him for who he really is, and not a reflection of our own desires. Right. Yeah. That's good. Okay. It says that they noticed. They're watching him, of course. They noticed that some of the disciples failed to follow the Jewish ritual of hand washing before eating. 
Now, the, we wash our hands for cleanliness yeah. uh, purposes. Or, or to, uh, but what is going on here with this custom in Jesus' day and time? Well, they had a uh, they had a custom of washing up to the elbows, mm -hmm. uh, but in the Old Testament, in the in the actual law, uh, the washing of hands and utensils and whatnot, that, like we're talking about, applied to the priests, not to the common man. Right. So uh, the Pharisees, who just have decided that if you want to be holy, you've got to follow the laws and the rules of of the priesthood, right. not just that of, for the common man. So right. they are applying a priestly code item to to everybody. Okay. So uh, uh, they didn't. His disciples weren't uh, following the uh, the ritual of hand washing like they would have wanted him to. Okay. So. With the Pharisees, that they want to make sure that they're doing everything right, right? Because they're scared to death if they do something wrong, God's going to bring judgment. Right. To them, holiness is an absolute. Right. You're either perfect, or you're not holy. And therefore, if if you're not perfect, then there's judgment. There's judgment. In, right. in fact, you almost could say, if you if you stop and think about it, I think they had some good intentions. Oh, they started out uh, the Hasidim. They they started out as a as a uh, as a genuine good holiness movement, they're they're the first holiness movement, if you want. Right. But they got off the rails into a legalism, if you will. Right. And uh, we got to guard against doing the same thing. That's right. I think the Church of the Nazarene has a beautiful history to it. Yeah. But uh, but we also have a history where we have fallen into legalism. Sometimes, and, yes, and, in uh, the way we think about holiness, mm -hmm. uh, particularly in this part of the country. Uh, uh, it yes. seems mm -hmm. uh, that uh, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're judged by what you wear, where you go, yeah. and uh, these are all outward external things. And Jesus, as we see this developing here, is going to be talking about some in internal things. Yeah. So okay. We'll yeah. Just... See, if I had my way, we would. Uh, of course, I'm not in charge. But uh, you know, <laughs> if I had my way, we would take uh, well what is now the Covenant of Christian Conduct, uh -huh. and we would give it back, we would give it back to Phineas Brzee's original title for it, which was his Advice for Holy Living. Oh. Which placed the burden on you to, you right. know, uh, to pray through and decide what to do about these things, as right. opposed to, there. here's a set of roles. Right. You know. Yeah, because the Holy Spirit can, uh, he's, a, he's a lot better motivator and teacher of, of holiness than even, uh, Good intended human beings that just make it a thing of the mind and instead of a thing of the mind and the heart. Yeah. Somehow you got to get these two connected because uh, uh, you can have it up here, but boy, if you don't have it here, then what you're doing is placing a lot of uh, burdens. Yeah. It was hard for me because I didn't grow up in the church in Nazarene, so yeah. everything was new to me when I came into the church. But I, I do know the feeling of, of like, I just can't measure up. There, I just yeah. can't get all this figured out what people want me to do or how you're supposed to be doing them. Uh, I'm glad I stuck it through because I, I, I think there's a liberating. I love, I was commenting to someone earlier this week, the older I get, uh, I don't know if it's just because I get simpler in my thinking, but I just, I love the Church of the Nazarene. I yeah. love who we are. I love what we believe. And in fact, I just embrace, embrace it all. But you've got to be careful that you're embracing the truth. It's the truth that'll set you free, not the legalism. Or yeah, if we're not careful, we could, yeah. like I said, uh, if it was advices for holy living, we'd figure out a way of messing that up. If, I mean, some people would, because right. they would look at other people and say, well, they're not, not as mature as they should be. Right. They're not as mature as I am. Right. You know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, what you mean? And, and at, at the core of that is pride, you know. Right. And pride is the death of true holiness. Right. Exactly. It really is. Yeah, it's the it's the death knell of Christianity if we're yeah. not careful. Yeah. Okay, so we got the Jews, but it's interesting, especially the Pharisees. They really see themselves as the continuation of what Jewishness is supposed right. to be all about. Right, mm -hmm. and they're in the and they're they're in a lot of they're under a lot of pressure because you got the Herodians that are that are uh, uh, fans of Herod. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and then you got the Roman influence, you, and you've got the 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 Greek influence through yeah. all the uh, dispersion. You know, yeah. dispersa, dispersa, dis, uh -huh. dispersa. 
uh, uh, Jews. So you've got all these influences, and the Pharisees see themselves as the ones who are maintaining true Judaism. Right. And, uh, uh, and to a certain extent, they are. Uh, but uh, they've just decided to reflect on other people their shortcomings and right and uh, yeah that, that has not and worked you got out. Judean Jews, you got Galilean Jews, you got Zealots. You really do have a hodgepodge or a, a, a mix mix of a uh, various yeah and and, and in their mind this washing is just like the dietary laws, which mm-hmm. is just like circumcision. They're the markers of what interpret what's a true Jew and what isn't. Right. You know, so, and Paul's going to worry, uh, going to talk about uh, circumcision a lot. He's going to mm-hmm. deal with that marker. Right. And uh, Jesus is going to deal with the dietary laws here in a minute. And that's going to, that's that's another marker of who is, who's a Jew and who isn't, whether you right. can eat pork chops or not, you know. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. So uh, uh, we're going to get into this a little bit. Okay. So. Well, here's the external thing. They do not eat, which I guess would be internal, until they have poured water over their cupped hands as required by the ancient traditions. There's some key words I think jump out there. Required, Required. uh, ancient traditions. Traditions. Uh, Talk a little bit about traditions. Are traditions good or are they bad? Both. (laughs) (laughs) They're well-intended and they're good when they... come about but uh, they, have, they have a they have a tendency to get separated from the context in which they were established and That's they become a way to put it. and they become silly like we we used to have a rule about not going to the movies mm-hmm. well that was overcome by technology when people had TVs in their in their house and and right. all the other entertainment but but we stuck to that rule about not going to the movies right and we finally got smart and, and rewrote it the way it is now, but uh, it got separated from its context, right. and it just became a silly role. Right. That, that, you know. right. Yeah, and of course, we'll all talk about it. I mean, the things that you used to not be able to watch, the, uh, you know, the Andy Griffiths, uh, everybody yeah. loves them today, and, yeah. the, and, and they're the purity when when would have been, the, you, if you went, that was the big thing. In fact, that's the first <laughs> I'm telling everybody that's the first uh, question I asked Jean uh, on a date was that let's go to the movies <laughs> instead of saying she was a good Nazarene and couldn't go she said her daddy wouldn't let her which meant he was a good Nazarene and yeah. she wasn't going to go yeah, <laughs> yeah. So well there, there you go too, there you go yeah. movies mm-hmm. made the difference whether you were a good Nazarene or not that's exactly and, right and these and these rules about washing make the difference of whether you're a good Jew or not right you know that's exactly what happened yeah. okay Here's similarly, boy, boy, my mouth's just all dry today. They don't eat anything from the market until they immerse their hands in water. This is but one of the many traditions that they clung to, such as the ceremonial washing of cups and pitchers and kettles. There's all this outward washing that's going on. And, and uh, also from this period, archaeologists are finding a, an awful lot of mitfas, mitfas, you mm-hmm. know, where they, the, the, the ceremonial baths, uh, right. where they used to dip themselves in. Yes. And uh, now they're finding out that uh, there were mitfas around the temple. So you had, you had to take a bath. Right. If you were fair, you had to take a, you know, completely cleanse yourself and change your robe and whatnot mm-hmm. to go into the temple as opposed to, right. you know, normal people and so there there's an opportunity right there for the for the pharisees to think well i'm a real jew and these people are just visitors right. you know wow <laughs> you know all this is external i mean it's the stuff that you can watch and you can see and, and, and you really can judge. you can yeah you're you're sort of putting your your religion out there and you're almost saying even if you're not even thinking it, that you know this is the way you got to do it and if you don't do it this way or do it the way that I'm doing it, then you're wrong and I'm right. And now we start getting into problems as we're going to see in this yeah. story. Uh, so the Pharisees and teachers of religious law asked him, why don't your disciples follow our age old tradition? They eat first performing the hand. They eat without first performing the hand washing ceremony. Or with impure hands. That's right. Okay, so yeah. they're just they're just get grabbing some food and eating. That's right. 
And in this case, they're probably eating the bread left over from the feeding of the 5,000. Oh, okay. Wow. Because they came out of that boat, you know. Right, yeah. And Jesus has fed the 5,000. And they had the leftovers. That's right. That's interesting. I never looked at it that way. Okay. All right, let's go to verse 6 then. Jesus gives an answer. You hypocrites. Now, that's an interesting word there. You hypocrites. Yeah. You actors. Actors. Uh, you know, uh, back in that day, they would they would get a little mask, and not kind of the mask we're all fighting over today, but yeah. a little mask that would be uh, portrayed as an actor representing someone else. So Jesus is saying, you're working on all this outward stuff that's yeah. covering up the true stuff that's supposed to be happening on the inside, and he calls them hypocrites. Yeah. And, uh, and I think this is the only place in Mark where he, he uses the word hypocrites. So oh. It's common in Matthew, but right. I think this is the only place where he, that Mark actually used the word hypocrites. I could oh, be wrong, okay. but they... Well, he falls back on a prophet who yeah. was not a hypocrite. Yeah. <laughs> Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. For he wrote, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Yeah. And again, we use our lips to put together words. Mm -hmm. So you can see this and you can hear what I'm saying, but there's a problem in here. And uh, if there's a problem in here, it's probably going to show itself out up here. But if you get things right here, then things will sound right out here. Yeah, and there's there's an, there's an, another little sidebar here. If okay. they honor me with their lips, uh, we all know people, uh, at least I know you do, and I do, uh, as pastors that can uh, can quote the Bible chapter and verse. Right. But wouldn't know Jesus if he walked in the room. Right. <laughs> I right. mean, you know, they're, yes. uh, you know, and that's the spirit of Phariseeism, you know. They, they, can, they can tell you what it says. Right. But they don't have a foggiest notion what it's about. Wow. So, oh, man. I sure don't want to be guilty of that. No. Uh, man, I tell you. Okay, verse 7. Not only does he call them hypocrites, but he, he says their worship is a farce. Yeah. Because in they, vain do they worship me, in other translations. Yeah. Okay, says. I like that. In vain. Yeah. For they teach man made ideas, but they equate them as being commands of God. Yeah. And I think we do do that over oh, and yeah. over and over again. So that sometimes we even get confused. In fact, uh, a lot of times, um, People have a tendency, I, I call it folk theology. I, I, I really call it the, 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 the raising of Christianity in the home where it's talked about and maybe even some, some good parents trying, but they're, what they're giving is what they've heard about Christianity as yeah. opposed to what Christianity is if you really open the Bible and spend some time studying it. My professor called it goofy dust theology. <laughs> it can be, it can be, but it can be so, people can adhere to it so, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, religiously or so seriously that, I mean, to cross it, it puts you in, in a dangerous situation. And, yeah, and it, it's well-intentioned. Yeah. If it's well intentioned, that means it's fine for the for the for the first generation that are teaching it. It's when the second generation holds to it without thought right. that it becomes a problem. And, yes. and uh, mm -hmm. um, I had a I work when I was growing up. I worked in a steel steel uh, factory, mm -hmm. steel steel mill, and uh, one of the things I I did was clean out the machines from behind the uh, you know the slugs and things and behind the presses and whatnot. Clean them out, you know. Right. And I had a, a work partner who was uh, uh, from Sand Mountain, as a matter oh, okay. of fact. Couldn't read or write a lick, <laughs> okay? Yeah. And uh, uh, this was when the uh, moon landing was taking place, and the astronauts were, you know, right. and they were talking about that. He swore up and down that the Earth was square. Mm. And he would not believe that the Earth was round or that we had orbited it. Why? Right. Because his preacher told him that the that the Lord placed angels at the four corners of the earth, and there was no corners in a square in a circle. Right. And he wow. believed that, and he would defend it with his life wow. that that the they couldn't the astronauts couldn't have circled the earth because the earth is square. Wow. And he believed that. I know it. I mean, we're talking seriously ignorant, right? You know, uh, uh, but he believed it. I know it. It can be. It can be. Tough to deal with. It yes, really it can. can. And that's an extreme <clears throat> example, but we do it in little ways sometimes. Yeah. But. 
Yeah, Jesus, he Jesus takes this uh, pretty serious. I mean, he's mm-hmm. he's 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 not sugarcoating the Pharisees, calling them hypocrites. They're actors. They're, they're not true disciples or true followers. Yeah. And this, I mean, this in vain worship, as you described it, is is, is right on. I think. Okay, verse eight. For and this is why they're hypocrites, and this is why their worship is in vain. They ignore God's law, and then they substitute their own tradition. Yeah, and we find that all the time. It seems like in organized religion. Yeah. I'll put it that way. Okay, uh, he, he man he ain't letting up. <laughs> you skillful, skillfully sidestep God's law in order to hold on to your own tradition. You can just watch them. Dan- doing the dance there around the yeah. Word of God there. Wow, sidestepping. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Now he gives us an example. Okay. Moses gave you this law from God. So here's what God wants you to do. Honor your father and mother. Yeah. And anyone who speaks disrespectfully of father and mother must be put to death. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> how many... How many um, Children are put to death because they speak disrespectfully to their parents. Yeah, not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so that's what's supposed to happen because you're supposed to honor your father and mother. So let's see what they were doing. But you say it's all right for people to say to their parents, well, sorry, I can't help you for I have vowed to give to God what I would have given to you. I think there's yeah. a special word for that. Code. Corbin. Yeah. Corbin. I, yeah. Explain that to us. Well, it was an irrevocable vow that you took uh, uh, to uh, donate something or donate a certain part of your estate uh, to the temple, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, you could claim you could you could still use it while you had it, but basically it, it, you're willing it to the temple, right? Okay, uh, and uh, as long as it's willed to the temple. You cannot use it for other purposes right. in, in their understanding of the, right. the law. So right. that uh, if your parents needed needed help, you didn't have to help them. And not only did you have to help them, but you could claim piety for not having to help them. And you could uh, thus be very proud of yourself because you were giving it to God. And that's more important than giving it to your parents. Right. Yeah, a couple of things are going through my mind here. Um, First of all, uh, dishonesty. Okay, I, I've heard this interpreted that you know um, they can't give financial help to their parents because they've committed this certain amount of money to God. But really, uh, there's no guarantee they're going to give it to God. Yeah. So it's just become an excuse to hold on to the money. Yeah. Maybe that's true, but I think there's a deeper sin, and the deeper sin is this. You actually believe that you have made a vow to God, but you've got parents here that need help, but you're not going to help them because you made this vow to God. And so therefore, by keeping this vow to God and not helping your parents, you think that you have done something really good for God. Yeah. Now, this got to be such a problem that uh, in, in Judaism that the rabbis finally wound up uh, creating a... Uh, uh, creating a provision in, in, in their interpretation of the law that said uh, what you gave to your parents is care for them. your elderly parents or yeah. idiot children right you know, <laughs> uh, uh, was a deduction from your tithe right so you could you, you could deduct that. that that's that's part of the payment of tithe it's right. got to be such but that was in response to such a uh, uh, such a problem here where right. you were going to keep your vows to the temple if it killed you and your right. parents, you know, right. so. Yeah, and really what you're doing here, you keep one or two things. You could, you could be keeping a building standing. Yeah. Or you may be keeping a, a um, uh, organization just alive. Yeah. And really, but the, the main thing is you have some parents over here that really need some help. Right. And uh, I always want to teach my kids this because I'm becoming that elderly parent now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, but it, this is really a very serious problem that Jesus yeah. is after. This is not to be really uh, made light of because it's, it's, it's coming up with 
our own rules to sidestep God's rule. Yeah. And, and it's a beautiful illustration. And the purpose of all faith is to help people. Right. It is not to prop up improper religion or improper buildings or anything like that. And part of the part of the problem here is that the temple's not doing its job perhaps as well as it should because right. there is no social network. Right. Like our, our social social safety net that we have. Right. Okay. Right. The temple was it. Right. Okay. Yeah. The temple helped the poor. That's right. The temple and and uh, if they weren't doing that job, guess what? It wasn't getting done. You wasn't getting done. So right. you had to had to have some resources to take care of your elderly parents or or the take care of the poor. But right. you're doing the temple's job. You're circumventing the temple, but the temple's not doing its job. Right. Yeah. So uh, you get into this. Uh, right. uh, well, I tell you what. When I was in Chereca, and uh, and Jean's grandmother was a of a, a, a different denomination than uh, Church Nazarene but very close to it. But she would send fifty dollars to us at Trevecca. It was part of part of her time. Mm-hmm. And uh and I'm telling you, if she had that fifty dollars had a way of showing up on a regular basis yeah. when we just had nothing. Yeah. <laughs> now again, you know, she probably would have been criticized for doing that by some, but I'm just here to tell you, she helped this yeah. young preacher trying to make it and couldn't make it financially yeah. and it was a beautiful expression of faith yeah uh, so i will let people decide if she did right or wrong all right but you say it's all right for people to say to their parents sorry can't help you for i have vowed to give god what i would have given to yeah. you oh. and the uh and the temple the pharisees and the priests were the first ones to say hey you can't use it yeah you can't you, you can't use it for that because you you dedicated it to us. Yeah, I mean you can feel the pain of. I mean, can you see someone saying that to uh, some needy parents? I yeah. mean, you can just it's something just screams all through this story. Man, this is not what faith is about. This yeah. is not what Christianity. Yeah. And, but in in reality, Christianity is a beautiful faith. Because it does care, and it does, it does want to help, yeah. and it does want to rescue. And and to add insult to injury, they could feel proud of themselves for not taking care of their parents. Oh, that's what. Yeah, that's yeah. the scenario I painted yeah. a while ago. You're exactly yeah. right. That's the and that's a deeper sin. That's right. Oh, it's, it's just oh. So in this way, you let them disregard their needy parents. Yeah. Uh, you know, again, I think it was, I was listening to my Bible this morning and uh, James, you know, you say you have, you have faith, but you see someone who is in need and you say, well, God bless you. And I'm praying for you. I'll pray you, for you, I hope but you don't help them. That's, yeah, that's yeah. right here. You're disregarding the need yeah. right there in front yeah. of you. And it is, I mean, it's frustrating because our church is located right here on a major thoroughfare in the city, and we get people all the time. I mean, there are people that are going to take advantage of you, but but I tell you what, you still, you know, I have to really work on my attitude and say, you know, look for the true needy so that you can help people that are in yeah. dire situations. I always I always pastored uh, smaller, uh, poorer congregations, mm-hmm. and uh, I can tell you it. Uh, uh, and on main thoroughfares in both cases, right. and uh, that was the hardest part of my job. That was the hardest part of the the job was knowing when to say yes and when to say no. Oh, and absolutely, it, it's just uh, sometimes it's just impossible, you know. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. A lot of times we want to think, well, you know, we know what they're going to do with it, and uh, I'll never forget the time that we did do help this one person. And the next time I saw them, buddy, they were sitting right down here at the favorite market. And they were out in the yard. They were eating. So yeah. they did use the money to go get something to eat. And so yeah. uh, you just, I think we should always have the heart of trying to, to help people. Especially with drug addiction. Drug addiction has, oh, yeah. has taken over the culture in many respects. And we got to a point where we decided we weren't going to give out cash. We were going to give out groceries. Right. And then we found, we've in a couple of cases, we found people down on the main main drag uh, auctioning off the groceries so they could get drugs. Right. So right. it's just, they're just, I wow. mean, there's just nothing you can do sometimes, you know? I mean, yeah. 
one of our favorite stories Jim Emery and I uh, talk about. We were doing so just about a week or so ago. We were, we helped this one uh, person in the community, and they took the check down to uh, it was Red Food at the time, and mm-hmm. they got that Red. But we had written the check to the electric company, but they had taken it down to Food City and cashed it. <laughs> and so we went down there to find out why right. did you cash this check yeah. that was made out to help someone with their electric bill and stuff. So yeah, those things yeah. happen. They sure do. Yeah. All right. He says here, though, these traditions can counsel the Word of God in order to hand down your own tradition. And this is only one example among many others. Uh, I think this is one of the things that attracted me to Jesus uh, all along. He he don't play. Yeah. Uh, he's not he's not into um, uh, popularity and games and and creating these false sense of uh, security. Uh, he tears it apart, <laughs> and that's exactly what you see him doing here. And uh, I guess we can understand then why things were so hard. Uh, for him because he was creating uh, perhaps some enemies here. Yeah. All right. So he's been talking to the Pharisees and the teachers of religious law, the scribes. So now a third group. He It's like, because the crowd's been watching and listening to this discussion. Yeah. And the crowd knows, they know how the Pharisees are. They know how they, I, I bet you they already knew all these things thinking it, you know, there's something wrong with our faith when we don't help our parents and they force us to give to the temple. Yeah, and and I can I can see the thought process. The pr- thought oh. process is, you know, if we let them take care of their, if we set that precedent and let them do with it what they wish with the money, uh, we're not going to get anything That's from right. them. We're going to be broke. <laughs> the temple's going to be broke. Yes. Yeah. Oh, man. And, and we, yeah. And, you know, I, I don't dare to say there aren't some people wrestling with this well, concept. Well, like, like I say, we pastors have to wrestle with this one all the time because right. we gotta we got to keep the organization running. Right. Got to pay the bills. Got to pay the bills. Got to yeah. pay the electric bill. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, we need to help people. Right. Uh, and if you, but I, I know, I know from my own experience, when you start saying yes, you got a line. Yeah. And you start saying no, the line disappears. Right. You know, it's it's, it's really tough to know sometimes. It is. It is. is. You're exactly right. Okay. So Jesus is going to set a new standard. He calls them over and tells them to come and and listen. I love that. All of you listen. There's so much... We've lost the art of listening. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, 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 if TV has done anything, it's clogged our ears. And and that is true even, to be honest with you, I don't turn on the news anymore right now. I'm just, uh, I'm tired of hearing all the politics. I'm tired of hearing all the, even the sickness. It's just, so I, we're surrounded by all this, but we're not listening yeah. anymore yeah. and stuff. And uh so I, there might be some others out there that maybe join me in that. I don't yeah. know. Okay, so Jesus, you know, he gets right down to the heart of the issue. It's not what goes into your body that defiles you. It's not the food. It's not dirty food that's making you dirty. <laughs> you are defiled by what comes from the heart. It's a dirty heart that makes us hard. It's a hard heart that makes us uh, difficult to to help other people it's the heart that's the problem it's not the process of 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 dietary laws yeah so he's just digging deeper and deeper here but of course we realize he's he's digging himself deeper deeper and deeper into a hole because uh, they go on yeah okay so then it says he goes into the house to get away from the crowd and now his disciples ask him what he meant by the parable that he had just used. Yeah. Okay. So let's see what he says. Don't you understand either? Can't you see that food you put into your body cannot defile you? And that's what we talked about. Yeah. Now that's a... Uh, 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 that's a questionable translation because he's not there yet. 
Okay. Okay. You want me to go back or? You, well, no, this no. One? Okay, uh, this one right here. Yeah, in the okay. uh, in the translation, that's not. Uh, uh, let's see, he says, are you knocking and understanding also? Do you not understand that whatever goes into a man from outside cannot defile them? He's talking about the yeah, not having that. washed your hands. It's okay. Mark that adds parenthetically uh, that thus he declared all foods clean. Okay. Uh, th that is the verse then right there. Okay. Yeah. Food, okay. Food doesn't go into your heart, but only passes through the stomach and then goes into the sewer. Yeah. Now, that's, he's just describing a bodily situation there. Yeah. But, he, like you said, okay, you're saying Mark has a, a interpretation. Mark is the one that interprets this. Yes, by saying he declared that every kind of yeah. food is acceptable in God's eyes. Now, because... Don't forget, Mark is talking to another audience. He's talking to an mm -hmm. audience in Rome of, okay. of Gentiles and Jews mixed. Right. So he's he's probably wrestling with this issue of pure uh, pure and impure foods and, and what right. to eat and whether you can eat. And right. and uh, he's he's living post the vision of, of uh, Peter on the rooftop. And probably Paul's problem in Corinth where you got the food offered to idols right. and, and that so, kind of situation. They're all operating, they're already, they're all writing 30 years after this. Right. So Mark is interpreting what Jesus said as making all foods clean. Right. Uh, so what you're saying is that probably this, this understanding was in the incident that took place like you say, he's, he's addressing an issue probably that was going on 30 years later. Right. As the Christian church is trying to... Uh, Wrestle with this idea of Jew, Jew Gentile... Right, the, kosher. The kosher, kosher. Unco right. Yeah. That's, uh, it's a big deal. Yeah, I uh, made a big mistake of going to Israel one time, and, and uh, I, on, the, on the Sabbath, I got to have a cup of coffee. This mm. is, I drink coffee black now, but I didn't then. So I asked for cream, and he looked at me and said, you don't get cream today. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, so I, there's evidently something uh, unkosher about having cream on the Sabbath. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's the work of getting it there. I don't know what happened, but I, that was interesting. It always stuck with me Yeah. <laughs> all these years. Okay, that, that's a good interpretation. Okay, then let's, let's look at verse 20 here. Here's the heart of the matter. Okay. It is what comes from inside that defiles you. Yeah. For from within, out of the person's heart, comes evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, and he goes on, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, lustful desires, envy, slander, pride, and Foolishness. Oh, that'll preach, won't it? I've been saying, I don't know about you, but I, I, I mean, really, you need a bath after that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that we're concerned about some bacteria getting on food that's just going to pass through the body and back out when you got all this vile base sinfulness comes from the inside comes from yeah. the inside of a yeah. person yeah. how can that happen how can the heart be that bad or, or that nasty and yet we live in uh, we see this in societies all over the place yeah. where where these kind of things are just rampant and uh, and what we have to be care uh, particularly careful about is that uh we don't see them in the church. Well, that's what I was about to say. Oh. We do see these things in the church. Yeah. And that's what's so shocking because we can focus so much on the outside, how we, we look in the community, how we perceive ourselves as being when you've got the very same stuff going on inside a congregation. And, and this is the number one reason where if there would have been anything that would have pushed me away from Christianity all those years was that concept that I had that, you know, it, it, you could find this kind of stuff going on in the church. And when people do things that are some of these things, they just destroy their Christian witness. Yeah. They destroy the witness of the church. They destroy the, the, the witness of Jesus himself. And it's, so it's a very serious 
matter here that yeah. we understand yeah. there is a we are representatives of Christ. Yeah. We are ambassadors for Christ, as the biblical expression goes. Yeah. And, and when we when we uh, do this kind of stuff, it reflects badly on Christ. Yeah. I mean, really, it really affects the uh, particularly fun pe- uh, young people. Oh, absolutely! It destroys them. I'm trying yeah. to understand. But I, even though I think a kind of a, even a deeper thing though is to um, understand there's a problem. That only Jesus can claim and yeah. fix, and it, it, nothing we. It's not that we try to reform ourselves, that we try to improve ourselves. I mean, there's got to be something that can get in there and make a difference, and yeah. he, he can get in there and make a difference. That's, that, you know, to me, um, one of the most amazing things is. Um, uh, I'm not familiar with this kind of world, but how a surgeon can open the body and just do all that work on the inside and, and close it back up is, yeah. is just a, an amazing thing to me. Uh, in, in fact, if uh, you know, a lot of times in our ministerial work, we, we sometimes we struggle with seeing results. I, I, and I've often said to myself, if I had to do it over again, I think I would be a a, a a missionary doctor so that I could yeah. see some results but yet share Christ at the same time. <laughs> and we uh, uh, one more one more point we, we sometimes we can emphasize this kind of stuff not being in the church uh, wrong-headedly in a, in, mm-hmm. in a wrong, because what we do, is we create a situation where people etern- internalize this, right? Don't express it, but it's still there, right? Mm. You know, wow. And that's uh, uh, we have to have uh, we have to have an environment where the altar is open, it's friendly, and uh, mm-hmm. and where uh, we can be honest with each other and ourselves, right? And can really deal with these issues as opposed to just hiding them. That's right. I think, you know, in the Church of the, of the Nazarene, we have a strong, it's very interesting, we're talking about this, tradition mm-hmm. of coming to the altar. Yeah. And uh, th- there are two mistakes uh, I see with altar-type ministries. And the first one is this, where, uh, and I try to be careful even in, 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 in probably in my first uh, experience in the church, it seemed like every sermon I heard was a salvation sermon that made me want to go down to the altar and get saved every every Sunday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I don't, I, I do believe you can get saved and not have to keep getting saved every Sunday. Absolutely. And so therefore I'm saying, you know, you, you know, a lot of people go almost to the altar too, too much. Okay. But I also want to give this equal warning is that we... What we have done in our uh, probably day and time and with Nazarene churches is that we don't go enough to work on these things that we're talking about here. Yeah. Not getting right with God on you know every Sunday, getting saved, but letting the Holy Spirit continue to dig deeper, letting the Holy Spirit wash us, letting the Holy Spirit uh, you know reveal and 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 you and you're you're right. Uh, there are some things that I that I quit doing when I became a Christian, not because um, I thought it was wrong, not because somebody else shared with me that it was wrong. I mean, the Holy Spirit just got a hold of me and 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 changed my way of thinking and stuff. Because, uh, uh, man, I could uh, you know I. I could, I would love to pull pranks on people sometimes, but some of those pranks were very mean and, and very yeah. hurtful. And uh, so, you know, I didn't need somebody to tell me quit, quit being mean to one another. The Holy Spirit got a hold of me there yeah. and, and and changed those things. So I I wish that we could. I wish our people could feel free enough to keep coming to the altar. Yeah, there's a. This goes back to that 
legalism and pride in, in one sense. The, the Another mistake you can make is I grew up in a small church mm-hmm. uh, where if you went to the altar, everybody wanted to know what you'd done wrong. Oh, I, oh absolutely. Uh, it had a very negative connotation. Yes. So people, as, as a consequence, didn't go to the altar because they didn't want all the attention of right. people wondering what they'd yeah, done wrong. Well, that's exactly right. You know. In fact, uh, I think a lot of times, it, this has changed, but it used to be, goodness gracious, you, you know, uh, everybody on the list, all their, all their sins through their prayer requests. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm yeah. going, well, no. <laughs> and so uh, uh, you just got to be careful. Yeah. And, and boy, it's hard to believe. That it, this is our last verse for day. We're right up against the uh, hour that we're committed to this, and that's okay. God's been good. But notice this. All of these vile things come from within. They are what defile you. So we are exposing the the heart, which I think it's the prophet uh, Ezekiel that says, or Jeremiah, one of those two that says, it's the most deceitful thing in the world, Yeah, this thing called the heart. You know, you can think you're trying to work from the best intentions, and yet you are, and you think you've cleaned things up, and yet what they've done is create a system that is more damaging than the evil that was abiding it. And really what they've done is, okay, they've cleaned up the outside, but they've done nothing to, to go deeper in, yeah. in the heart that really needs to be cleaned. Yeah. So, you know, this to me, uh, and, and maybe we're just scratching the surface because really what, even as we come out of this verse, uh, I'm looking ahead to what's coming next. We're not leaving the issue of purity. Purity, oh, no. purity and the impurity is going to be coming back again all through this chapter. Yep. So if you want to, you know, a theme for this chapter is purity versus impurity. impurity. And uh, so you, you, you see uh, that there's nothing that we can do that's going to clean the heart. Somehow God has got to get in there and clean that heart. You can... You can make it look all right from the outside, and the heart be as black and as as hard as a as a rock. Right. Uh, but if you get the heart inside, the outside generally takes care of itself. Right. And this is what I love about the Church of the Nazarene is that this is what we are about. We want to get the gospel deeper into people's lives. Yeah. yeah. Even though you know holiness unto the Lord is our watchword and song. I mean, that is our marching orders. That is what we are about. But it doesn't make us better, and it doesn't make us look down on other people. Uh, we are just, we are, we are searchers. We are people that long for the essence, yeah. the purity uh, of the gospel. Yeah. Good study. Good study. You've got good insight. <laughs> well, thank you for watching tonight, and and. I think you're feeling the burden that I'm feeling. Man, uh, there's so much more we want to say yeah, I know. about this. But don't give up on it. You hold on to it because when we come back next week, we're, we're going to continue to wrestle with this. And this we will issue. be back next week, even though it's the day before Thanksgiving. That's right. We, we will. sure will be. So. All right. Well, let's pray. Okay. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Wow. What a lesson. And uh, Heavenly Father, uh, there's a sense of frustration. And yet there's a, there's a sense of, of, of yearning. Uh, we want that which is real. We want that which is effective. We, want, we don't want to create something that's superficial, something that covers up, something that makes us just into actors. We want to be true disciples. So we come to Jesus and we want him to you know, touch our hearts and to clean our hearts, that we clean our minds and clean our bodies and point us in the right direction. And uh, so be with our people and help them in this endeavor, for we ask it all in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All right, thank you. God bless.